When I say the word war, what images come to mind? If you're like most people, it's ships, planes, troops, and uniforms. When I say the word warfare, same thing, right? I'm going to describe a war that's underway right now. It's a very different war. It's a serious war. It's a secret war, and it's happening every day to every man, woman, and child, and future generations in the United States and also our Western allies. It's a war that's happening every day underneath our noses, and we're not really aware of what, really how it's happening and why it's happening. So, we don't know what we don't know. There's a bigger picture that's out there. Uh, people are wondering with all the news and the breaches and so on, they're saying, hey, there's got to be a bigger picture. What's going on here? Can somebody connect the dots for me? That's what I'm going to do today for you. I'm going to open a window into the intelligence world, the cyber world, and we're going to flip the telescope around and bring everything into vision for you. The modern battlefield is everywhere. Nearly everything we do today is connected to the internet. So when we buy cars, certain cars, when we drive cars, when we use technology, anything that's connected to the internet, and even those things that are in our homes and our offices are not totally protected, even if they're not connected to the internet. So the modern battlefield is everywhere because technology has brought us to that level. This war is defined by no rules, zero rules. The biggest mistake that we make as Americans is we believe that our adversaries have the same rules, the same values, and the same goals as we do. And they could not be more diametrically opposed. Those values and those rules are, are used against us all day, every day, even while we sleep, because our adversaries are on different time zones. These are headlines over the past two, or two weeks recently, over a two-week period. It's not Cambridge Analytica, it's Facebook. That signifies just one of hundreds and hundreds of different examples of our exposures and our, our vulnerabilities. <clears throat> if you weren't worried about Russia, you should be. The US indicts, charges nine Iranians in massive theft of intellectual property. Investors put cybersecurity at the top of the list. Xi Jinping said that we will fight the bloody battle to gain our rightful place back in the world. And the last one, cyberspace, is the new battle space. It's also called the forever war because of technology. Another headline in the two-week period, and this is just recent. Now, these are, this is to show you the severity and the ferocity of really what's going on in the cyber world and the intelligence world, which affects all of us, our families, our companies, our universities, our military, and our government agencies. Everything. This article, why uh, Trump's tariffs are a big deal to China. The bigger story there is it's not the tariffs. He didn't want to start a tariff war or a trade war. The bigger issue there is he's firing a shot across the bow, saying, hey, look, enough is enough on this intellectual property theft. So what's being stolen here is intellectual property, innovation, and the research and development that develops that and performs that. And that, uh, if you really think about the U.S. economy, the U.S. economy is built on innovation. And the more that we use technology to build that innovation, the more that we're exposed. So there's wide-scale wide theft of intellectual property, trade secrets, data, which translates to revenue, profit, jobs, and our future. The, the politically correct word for this is the new global competitive model. This is the model that's being exacted upon all of our companies and us. It's also called asymmetrical competition. Remember, that's the politically correct term. The real term is asymmetrical hybrid warfare. Now, remember, this warfare is targeted at civilians, so it's non-military. So even though it says warfare, don't tune out and think it's our, it, though that's, that's the bucket that goes over to the military guys in the uniforms. It's not. This warfare is our warfare, <clears throat> our civilians, us as civilians. Remember, it's rooted in no rules. They have a philosophy or live or die. We as Americans and our Western allies and NATO allies, we believe in uh, rules. We believe in win or lose. Our adversaries believe in live or die. They must live and we must die. 
we believe, you know, we get another chance next year. If we lose a deal, I'll get you next year. I'll get a deal from you next year in business. In sports, if we lose in our team or are rooting for a team, the clock sets every year. We're going to get you next year. We'll go to the Super Bowl. We'll go to the World Series, whatever. It's all cloaked under plausible deniability. When somebody gets caught, wasn't us. We don't know him. We don't know her. Everything is, is cloaked in plausible deniability. It's focused on comprehensive weakening of American society, American economy, and our way of life. Ultimate goal is complete takeover. Back in 2012, General Keith Alexander, he was the uh, director of the NSA and at the same time the commander of US Cyber Command, referring to this wholesale theft of economic espionage, it's the greatest transfer of wealth in history. If you want to put a number on it, it's about $5 trillion a year. The root number is about $500 billion a year, but you have to multiply that by the 10 years that that innovation, that research and development was meant to power revenue, profit, and jobs. So that's how you come at $5 trillion. That was 2012. This is quite a, uh, quite a bit or a distance in the future. So who's doing it? Who are, who's behind all this? Number one is the Chinese Communist Party. Emphasis on communist. Number two, Russian FSB, the, the governments of all of these countries. Emphasis on communist underpinnings. Iran, North Korea, India, and others, as well as the dark net. One thing that we noticed in the dark net over the past three years, three years ago, the dark net, for those of you who don't know, the dark net is a part of the internet. It's actually about 96% of the internet that is not visible to us unless you know how to search the dark net. Think of it as an iceberg. 4% of the internet is the surface net. That's what we use today. Emails, Google, Bing, Safari, and so on. Those search engines are not available or not allowed to search or capable of searching in the dark net. The, the iceberg underneath the surface is the dark net. Three, year, uh, three years ago, we noticed that 80% of the dark net were individual hackers or hacking groups. Today, 80% of the dark net is nation states, employing a lot of those individual hackers. So this strategy, asymmetrical hybrid warfare, is divided into three categories. Number one is non-military. Number two, transmilitary. And three is military. Again, think of military as traditional military. <clears throat> Ideological warfare is one of the examples. They attack our values our morals, and our perceptions. And then it goes into subversion. Demoralize, destabilize, and on and on till the final results. The next is uh, economic warfare. That's the, to disrupt our economics or our financial viability. It's done through investments, foreign investments in companies, buildings, real estate, assets, you name it. It's for power and control, and control of these assets, and limiting our abilities to compete in the future. Cyber warfare is the key accelerator to asymmetrical hybrid warfare, and that's all of us. We all use cyber. Uh, all of us are connected to the internet in many, many different ways. If you use a smartphone, if you use apps, if you have a car that's connected to the, inter to the internet, if you have computers that are connected to the internet, you are in cybersecurity, and you are in cyber warfare. This is what the overall strategy looks like. These are actually, I'm not going to busy you or bother you with a very busy slide, but the center of it is cyber warfare, the key accelerator to all the other methods. And what that does, and the reason it's a key accelerator, is because it's a relatively low investment for a very powerful one-to-many result in, in each one of these methods. So that's why cyber warfare is absolutely critical that we all focus on it. The second thing is about this slide is that uh, its key underpinnings is all in espionage. Espionage is the fabric of asymmetrical warfare. If we all understood the, es the espionage that goes on day after day in the United States, it, it's really, it will blow your mind. It's incomprehensible, the size, the, the amount, the size, the pervasiveness of the espionage that's going on. So what I would ask is that we all know that uh, there's a saying that uh, if you know, 
It's, if you're aware and if you know, then it's half the battle. So now you know. Uh, I would recommend uh, educating other people that you work with, your family and friends, of really what's going on here. <clears throat> Protect your values. Your values are under attack. The one thing that the Russians understand, the Russian FSB is very, very good at, they understand that the most exploitable device on the planet is the human mind. And that's why you see the, the election hacking and so on and so forth. You see these things going on. That's really what's behind it. And that feeds into the asymmetrical warfare issue. So guard your values. Understand that they're on, under attack on a daily basis. The other piece of it is your own personal cyber hygiene. Cyber hygiene and cyber security starts with all of us, starts with you. So don't click on anything that might be uh, suspicious. Use a virtual private network, a VPN. It's an encrypted tunnel. Make sure you have that on each one of your devices, your family's devices, your computers, your, your uh, smartphones, and so on. Use a password manager. Use very strong passwords, different passwords, on each device and each account. <clears throat> Make sure your routers in your houses are locked down with very, very strong passwords. Um, keep cybersecurity at, at the peak. Don't click on everything. Realize that all the data that you put in your phone and everything that you click on in your app is being used against you. Don't be so free on that. The other piece of it is privacy, set, privacy settings. Make sure you go into each app, each device, each computer, and lock down your privacy. Don't share everything with everyone. You, did you know that uh, when you take a picture on most uh, smartphones, that there's a geolocation on each one of that. So if you took that picture in your house, or your child took that picture in your house, and they post it on the internet, that's available to everyone with that geolocation of exactly where that picture was taken, longitude and latitude. So one thing that I would ask, if you want to take this to the next level, and I suggest you do, if there's a letter that you ever write in your, in your lifetime, write a letter to your congressman, your senators, and to your president and say enough is enough. Let's get a central, unified approach to this. Let's defend ourselves, and let's prepare for the future. So now you know, what will you do differently tomorrow? Thank you. Mm -hmm.